Remember this game? It's called Jazz Ball, and it was released in 1992 as part of the Microsoft Entertainment Pack for Windows. I used to love this game as a kid. I remember having it in a diskette, a storage device that eventually became the default save icon. For those who never played it, here is a quick overview. The game starts with a rectangular field and some balls bouncing around. Apparently these balls are supposed to be atoms. The goal is to separate the balls or atoms to confine them in a quarter of the original space. That is, to make at least 75% of the area unreachable for these bouncy balls. The atoms can't go through walls, and your only tool to confine them is to add more walls, which you can do by clicking at the desired position. A wall will start to build as two separate sides that meet where you clicked. You can also change the direction of these walls, that is, horizontal or vertical, with the right click. If an atom collides with an unfinished wall, then this one is not built and the player loses life. As usual, the game is over when the player has no more lives. Each level increases the difficulty by adding an additional point to the game. There is also a time limit and a confusing score. I wanted to see if I could remake this game with a more modern style. This has already been done by others. The best example I found is a game called Jazz Ball Galaxy, but all of these have also aged, so I decided to challenge myself to develop the next one. I started by organizing the different tasks I would need to tackle for this project. I grouped features into three categories, basic mechanics, game loop, and look and feel. I will not necessarily work on them in this order, but it helps me to keep things organized. The first thing I decided was to make this version of the game 3D, but with a 2D gameplay similar to the original. I also had the idea of making the space more discreet than in the original version, so the walls would be a set of consecutive cubes or blocks. I will now show you the game in different stages of development. I started by putting together a grid of cubes to build the play area and then added the first version of the balls. Before I show you how this looks, I need to mention that I used the cube shape for the boss. I promise it will make sense in a minute, just bear with me. This part was pretty straightforward, although there is always something to fix. Which I did. Eventually. There. And the first tasks were done. Then I added the possibility to build walls in the row the player selects with the mouse. At this point the walls are built immediately and extend to the borders of the map. I programmed this as literally changing the block's position in the vertical axis, so the cubes rise from the floor. I also made the right click rotate the next wall, although there is no UI element to indicate this at the moment. Going back to the cube shaped balls, in the beginning I wanted to remake this game but with a completely different story. I like the idea of replacing the atoms with some kind of monster. These creatures would corrupt the terrain and when the player confined them into little rooms then the rest of the field would heal which I thought could be pleasant to watch. Here you see some first attempts to follow this idea. I found some nice cube creature models, including zombies and skeletons, that I thought could fit in this game. I eventually abandoned this idea though. More on that later. I just added some zombies and went back to developing the core mechanics. I made the walls stop when they meet another one. My setup is basically a grid of blocks. Each block has a position in the plane and a state. This can be in something I call floor mode or wall mode. When in floor mode, the zombies ignore them, but they bounce against the block if it is in wall mode. I use this block state setup to code the next part. Walls should stop if a zombie hits them. I added a new transition mode to represent this intermediate state. I also started using red and blue colors to identify the different sides of the wall. I also spent some time playing around with making the tiles rise smoothly, which of course worked first try. Well, not really, but I eventually made it work but then abandoned the idea as I wasn't sure if it would fit the style I was going for. At this point most of the core mechanics were in place, so it was time to add a goal, levels and a way for the game to be over. I started with the levels. Each level adds an additional monster to the field. I didn't have a way to win a level, so I added a keyboard action to transition between them. At first, the zombies appeared all over each other in the center of the map, which led to this funny behavior. I fixed this by making the zombies spawn at random points but with some distance between each other. I then added lives. Each level starts with as many lives as there are zombies in the level, and these go down when a zombie hits a rising block. The last important feature I was missing at this point was a way for the player to win a level. In Jazz Ball, this is done by clearing 75% of the play area so I needed to keep track of the shape of the map and the position of the creatures. For this purpose, I once again took advantage of my terrain being a matrix of blocks with different states and implemented the following algorithm. 
Every time a new wall is built, I scan the terrain to identify the rooms, a room being a set of floor tiles surrounded by walls, then check each room for monsters. For this, I made each block know whether there is a zombie above it or not, and finally count the amount of blocks in empty rooms, to get how much of the total area discovered. Eventually, I made the tiles in empty rooms also rise to make the closed areas become a flat surface, and added a UI element to show the progress to the player. Mechanically, the game is more or less done at this point, so I started playing around with the graphics. I tried to lean into my idea for the zombie story. I chose a color palette, made the terrain change colors between corrupted and cleansed, added some lights and post-processing effects. I added some other creatures, with the same properties as the previous ones in terms of size and speed, and finally made the background. I thought it would be nice for the story if there were these floating islands and the player travels between them to fight the monsters. However, at this point I took a break and started having second thoughts about the story. I began to feel it would be better to make the game look similar to the original chess ball. I also didn't like how I had to place the camera to make the characters pop and other details. However, Something I did like about this first iteration was the retro vibe, so I decided to embrace that. So I replaced the creatures with a 3D model of the chessball atom and completely changed the color palettes to one more reminiscent of the original game. I fine-tuned some effects and the lives and level progress indicators, which I kept very raw as I found it funny that the original game didn't have any icons for them. I then added some sound effects to help notice important events, such as losing a life or winning a level, and others to complete the experience, such as a noise when a ball bounces off a wall. This I made with an online tool. I definitely need to work on my sound effect skills, but I believe they turned out okay. Now it was time to add some juice. I added some particle effects here and there, made the camera shake with a few events, and worked on the lights and materials. I'm quite happy with the result, especially with the retro look. Finally, I made the title screen with a very rudimentary set of instructions on how to play the game, which I find useful to be able to quickly share the game for people to playtest it, and the game over screen that shows the level the player reached. I decided not to develop the original score system as I don't find it particularly fun. I added the transition effect between different screens, and the game was done. The game is definitely not perfect, it still has some bugs and minor design flaws, but nevertheless, I'm happy with the result. I plan to do more of these fun little projects, so please let me know what you think of the game in the comment section. There is a link in the description where you can play it yourself. Also consider subscribing for more content like this. And see you next time.